I'm Tom and I'm here to talk today to talk to you about shelters and building shelters from natural materials. If we're out in the woods and we're out for an extended period of time, the weather may quite change, it might start to rain, it might start to snow, we can be affected by the wind. These are things that affect our core temperature, which is very important to maintain. Our clothing can be very effective in maintaining a core temperature, but also we need some form of external shelter to help boost the effect that our clothing gives us. Today what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about building an A-frame shelter and how that can help protect us from the elements such as wind, rain and snow. When building the frame for our natural shelter we want two Y-shaped branches, this is our Y, and we also want one long pole. What we do with our two Y-shaped branches is we interlock them like so. This then allows us to rest our long branch on top of the ridge pole. This gives us the basic frame of our shelter. We can have our entrance at the front or we can have it to one of the sides. Having this pole out to the front allows us to hang things off it as we have an open fire at the front, such as pots and pans. We also make our ridge pole as long as the person inside it. That means that we're not wasting any space inside the shelter. We want it as close to the occupant as possible so that any heat is trapped immediately and is not lost. When we're working out the sides of our shelter, we need for our ridge pole just to cover our body. We don't want to have it so that we are sitting out in front of the shelter or sitting so far down that we create extra work for ourselves in building the shelter. For the side of our shelter, we're going to build a frame from sticks and then we're going to lay debris material over the top of that. I've collected sticks of varying length and I lay them on the frame as best they suit. And what I want to have is about a hand span difference between the poles. This will mean that as we build the lattice, so we'll put poles across, like this, using smaller sticks, the debris material should not fall through the holes. You can go smaller than this, but it will require more energy to do so. What you need to do is you need to pick the sticks that best suit the area along the pole. You want the larger sticks at the front, the smaller sticks to the rear. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate how we build up this half side. These small sticks with twigs on them are great because we can leave a small portion of the twig section on and these will form hooks that we can then connect into our larger sticks. This will then mean that we get a more secure
as you can see, we've started to build our letters. We can now build this further, or we can start to build our, um, our debris material on top of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to build the debris material up. The ideal thickness of the debris material is from your fingertips to your elbow. If you can get it thicker, this is better, but you need to provide an even covering across the shelter. So you need to build a layer, and then if you can, build a second and a third layer. If you're intending to stay out on this shelter for more than one night, this shelter will need daily maintenance. So we've started to build our shelter side up. As I say, you want to build multiple layers. So this is our first layer, which is approximately a third of what we need, maybe a quarter. We'll put our first layer on all over the shelter, and then we can add another layer. And each subsequent layer will act to allow water to run off the shelter, and also to trap body heat. If we wanted to, we could build the shelter slightly bigger, and that would allow us to have two or maybe three people inside. This would then allow us to share body heat. It also means that we can share the workload. It means that we can move quicker and we expend less energy completing the task. As you can see from the inside of this portion of the shelter, there's a few twigs that stick through. These can be used to be build the lattice outside. Any pieces that you want to break off, you might poke through. These can be added to the outer. As you can see, the, the debris material is held up. We've achieved approximately a quarter thickness of what we need in material. And we can obviously complete this shelter, giving us full coverage. I'm just going to do a section just to show you the techniques. This would then allow this area here to be our entrance, allow us to climb in and out. If we wanted to, we could build a barrier to the front with a mound of leaves behind it as well to add extra insulation and protection from the wind. If we had something like an emergency survival bag, the orange bags that are issued when you go out mountain walking. We could put one of those down inside and use that as an extra barrier. That will protect you from wind and rain, but it's not very thermally efficient. This type of shelter allows us to collect as much heat as possible using the natural materials. You don't need any materials to build it. You don't need any tools to build it. You can simply use items that you pick up off the forest floor to build this shelter. It makes it ideal in a situation where you have no materials with you to build anything. I've been Tom, I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope you enjoy the rest of winter camp and I hope to see you all soon.